Hello again! This video is going to cover Night Scout basics. In particular, what is Night Scout with Loop? This video is going to review Night Scout's displays and settings so that you can best know remotely what's going on inside of your Loop. This video will not cover the initial setup of a Night Scout site as that's part of a separate video and instructions. Additionally, we're not going to cover other types of Night Scout integrations like XStrip or Spike. This video is limited to discussing how Loop users in particular are going to be using Night Scout. Links are provided as always in the video descriptions for any related topics that you might want to get additional help or information for, such as building your Night Scout site. As a very brief background, Night Scout first started in about February 2013 as a way of remotely viewing Dexcom data, even before Dexcom developed its share system. A group of motivated parents of kids with type 1 and adults with type 1 work to develop Night Scout so that they could see their Dexcom data beyond simply the handheld receiver. They programmed the original Night Scout to allow an Android phone cabled together with a Dexcom receiver to serve as a way of uploading Dexcom data into the cloud, in other words, up into the internet. And this was a big, big deal. After all, this was the first way a parent could see their child's Dexcom data while in a different room, a different house, or even a different country. Parents could finally have date nights again. A Facebook group called CGM in the Cloud was formed to help support users as they navigated the growing options for the devices that were supported. And this effort got some really big attention, even getting an article in the Wall Street Journal. And deservedly so. It really is that big of a deal. Night Scout, through the work of amazing volunteers, has developed numerous pathways and devices that will integrate to display all of this important information. In 2019, Night Scout became the 10th most borrowed repository on GitHub with over 32,000 copies. And the Night Scout's um, CGM in the Cloud group has grown to over 30,000 members on Facebook. So let's dive in a little more to Night Scout details. Night Scout's a website that you can build yourself for free, is open source, meaning it's available to anyone, and is so much more than just simply displaying CGM data now. Once you build your Night Scout site, you can customize it with alarms and graphics and integrate it with Alexa. You can have lights turn on or off depending on alarms and alerts. It's amazing. The possibilities are almost endless. Night Scout is an optional service for Loop users. In other words, you don't have to have a Night Scout to Loop, but Loop does work really well with Night Scout. It provides a lot of benefit. Parents and caregivers can remotely see Loop's data overlaid on CGM trends. And Night Scout site allows for comprehensive data reports to bring to your endocrinology appointments, making settings adjustments easier for you and your healthcare provider. Night Scout can also provide customized alarms and alerts beyond just the simple Dexcom alarms. There are easy to follow directions and a video for how to build your Night Scout site in Loop Docs, so don't be intimidated. I promise you, you can do this. After building your Night Scout site, you can integrate Loop by entering in the Night Scout URL to your Loop settings. It's easy peasy. Now your Loop data will be streaming up into the internet and available for you remotely. So let's start off by getting acclimated to some of the main icons you're going to see in Night Scout. The three horizontal lines in your site's upper right corner are your Night Scout settings. The settings are where you can customize some important things. The first one for loopers is that you're going to want to select a render basal option. There's default and icicle and we'll talk about those a little bit later. You also want to check the boxes for the plugins that you're going to want to show pills for and we'll cover those too. Finally, the last part is an authentication. This is a protection, it's like a password for your site, and you're going to need to authenticate your site for your care portal icon to show, which we'll cover right now. So the care portal is a plus sign. It will be displayed so long as your site is authenticated. And if you press on the care portal plus sign, you'll have options to log treatment events to your Night Scout site. For example, sensor changes, site changes, remote overrides can be enacted or canceled here. Your loop overrides are automatically uploaded so that your care portal can use them. It's pretty cool. 
There's two icons I'm going to pretty much ignore. There's an edit icon and an audio icon, and to be honest, they're just used so rarely that I'm not even going to spend time on them. The most obvious first display item you'll see is your blood glucose graph in colored dots in the center of your screen. So where does Night Scout get this CGM data? Well, it's not from Loop. Loop does not upload your Dexcom data to Night Scout. Instead, your Night Scout goes and gets it from Dexcom share servers. You'll set this up in your initial setup of your Night Scout site. And basically, you enter your Dexcom username and password, and Night Scout will go and fetch it from Dexcom's share servers. Pretty easy. Except when share servers go down, as we've all recently experienced a couple times, if you want Loop to be your data uploader for your CGM data, you can customize Loop to do that, and there's instructions in Loop Docs for it. So you'll also see a whole bunch of boxes, little gray boxes with information in them. Those are called pills or pill boxes, and they provide lots of current information. For example, one of the pills you can select is how much historical CGM data you want to see. You can choose two hours, three hours, six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, or if you really go hog wild, the bottom is actually a 48 hours of old CGM data. It's pretty cool. You also will see your current BG and the difference from the previous BG listed up here. So in this one, the current BG is 91 and steady, and it represents that the last CGM reading had been 90 by showing the plus one. So very small change. You can also see how long it's been since that 91 was recorded. It was seven minutes ago. The user's blood glucose graph is also customizable to show the CGM data in color ranges according to how your targets are set up. See how there's some dots that are a little bit on the low side or a little bit on the high side here and they're drawn in yellow? That's because I've set up custom ranges for changing the colors to display within those ranges. So for example, really high values or really low values are in red, medium high, medium low ones are in yellow, and ones that I consider in range are in green. It's pretty easy to set those up. You set the targets in your initial setup and you can go back and change them at any time. Pretty simple. There's also pills related to care portal events like cannula age, sensor age, insulin age. You can see how old your site is, how old your insulin is, or how long your sensor has been running. There's also loop and pump pills that provide information from loop. So you can get your reservoir volumes, uh, you can get your loop status, and there's five symbols of loop status right next to the loop's name. In this particular screenshot, you can see there's a little sideways uh, lightning bolt. That's one symbol, but there's actually five of them. The five status indicators are shown here. An X means loop is currently experiencing an error. A circle with a vertical line means loop is recommending a basal, but it's not actually getting enacted. Usually this is a sign that you're in open loop mode or your pump is suspended. The sideways lightning bolt means loop has just enacted a new temp basal. The recycle symbol means that loop thinks the last temp basal it set is good to go again, so it's not making any changes, it's letting it ride. And the little yellow exclamation point is a warning symbol indicator telling you that loop is either red or it could still be working, but the uploads to Night Scout have failed. So this could happen if the person just doesn't have a data plan going. If you click on the loop pill, you'll also be able to see additional information. And this goes for all of the pills in Night Scout. If you click on them, there's additional information. In particular for the loop pill, you can see what the temp basal was that was started, the insulin on board, the carbs on board, the maximum and minimum of the predicted blood sugars, and the eventual in six hours blood sugar. This is what is really useful. If you're ever in doubt on any displays, the loop pill is a great tool to go to. You also will get, if there's an accident, you'll also get information about the error message, which can help with resolving red loops. The predicted blood sugar line is shown in purple, and this is uploaded directly from loop. These purple dots match the same predicted BG curve that's shown in the loop app. 
If you're not seeing the purple dots when you first set up your Night Scout site, go ahead and click on the three dots that are next to the 24 hour selection on that upper left area, and that will bring up a checkbox where you can mark it on. Usually you only have to do this the very first time you set up your Night Scout site. And there's also a battery indicator for the looping iPhone. You can see the percentage. So if your kid is on Spotify and Instagram and their battery is running low, you'll see it and can give them a heads up that it's time to charge up. There's also a display of the tent basils that Loop has been setting. So you can see all of these blue icicles um, or buildings as depending on your way that you set it up. Remember how I said earlier in settings, you selected a render basil as either default or icicle. If you set it up as default, the temp basils will grow from the bottom, kind of like buildings in a cityscape. So the higher the building, the larger the temp basil. If you selected icicles, those hang like icicles from a ceiling. So the further down they go, the more the temp basil is acting. It's totally personal preference how you want that to display. There's also insulin on board and carbs on board pills. These usually will display the most current information from Loop, but every once in a while if Loop is having problems uploading data, these carb on board and insulin on board pills may revert to a value that's Night Scout's version of those. And that's not necessarily accurate for a looper. So if in doubt, you can always, always, always go to the loop pill itself to see the current IOB and COB. Loop also automatically updates your Night Scout profile with some information from your loop settings when you make the changes in loop. So specifically, Loop will upload your basal rates, carb ratios, insulin sensitivities, and even your override presets to your Night Scout profile. This way, you can always tell what your saved Loop settings are. Loop will also automatically upload carb entries and boluses to Night Scout. The carbs will display as a dot with the top half drawn in white, and the boluses are on the bottom half drawn in blue. Clicking on a carb dot will reveal the absorption time as well associated with the entry. If the loop user edits that carb entry in loop, Night Scout will also be updated to match the new information. Loop will not read meal information from Night Scout to use in loop. In other words, you can't remotely enter carbs or insulin boluses and have loop use that information. Loop will also upload information to Night Scout about currently running overrides. While an override is active, you'll see an override pill indicating the targets of the override, the percentage insulin adjustment, as well as the ending time of the override. When the override is active, you'll see a gray bar, and when the override is turned off, that gray bar beneath the CGM data will end. So the gray bar will correspond to the time period that that override was active. Alarms are also a built-in and customizable feature within Night Scout. When your data goes beyond your designated warning or urgent thresholds, your BG box will turn yellow or red and music will play in the background. You'll see a message about the source of the alarm at the top of your Night Scout site. For example, on this one, warning, BGs are high and it turned yellow. You can tap on the BG box and it will show you snooze options for silencing your audio alarm. The alarms can also be configured for more than just CGM values. For example, if your data isn't uploading, you can have last data received and show uh, X through the BG indicating that that CGM data is old. And finally, you can access your Night Scout site from a variety of different ways. Any web browser will bring it up, and there's iPhone apps, several iPhone apps and Android apps to access your Night Scout site. It's awesome, super easy, share with anybody you want. This video has already packed in a ton of information into one sitting, so I'll be covering Night Scout reports in a whole separate video. Those are really fascinating and definitely worth exploring. Thanks for sticking in. I hope this explained why Night Scout can be such a valuable tool to use with your loop. Thanks.